All right, guys, let's talk about another homage watch. This is the Armida A12, and you can see it bears a striking resemblance to the Seiko SLA-017. I just had one of those on the channel, and the original 62 MAS that it pays the you know tribute to on the Seiko side of things. Um, but many people would argue that Seiko did it injustice by putting out a limited edition watch, and I think that, what was that one? That was well over 3,000. I think they're trending above even 4,000 now. So it became not obtainable by the majority of the watch lovers out there. So that's where Armida, and I'm sure there's probably a couple others out there, have stepped in and made a quality uh, homage to that. And I think it's fair that they did that because they put them at a price point that is realistic for us to obtain. I think brand new on their website, if you go to Armida, I'll put a link in the description. Um, I purchased, I personally purchased this one used via eBay. Nobody lent this in and Armida did not send it to me. I have asked Armida to send me watches and they, I guess, are too busy for me, but whatever. Um, their brand new price is like $449. So like for $450, you basically get a modern version of what the 62 MAS was at a price that is a better representation to what is obtainable to most of us. You know, brand new you're looking at for these Armidas, 450 and the used market, they hold value pretty good. I think you're still going to be somewhere mid to upper threes all the way up to 400 I, They really don't drop much. Um, and there's a blue one as well. So if you want to mix it up a little bit, you got this anthracite or gray dial, but then they also have a blue dial one, which looks awesome. So, and that was never offered by Seiko. You know, the Seiko SLA-017, I just looked it up on eBay. It looks like a few have sold for the $4,500 range. Um, that's just insane. Uh, it is an amazing watch. I had it on the channel. I 100% get the allure to it. It is an amazing watch. But how many of us are going to go drop just under $5,000 on a Seiko when at that price level you can get into Rolex? you know, or, or something other than that. I mean, if the SLA-017 is what you want, then you're going to have to pay what you have to pay. But if you want the same kind of watch at a fraction of the price, this is a excellent option. This is a 38 millimeter case, 48 millimeter lug to lug, a little bit of a turn down on the lugs there, and you have the drilled holes for the um, spring bars. Um, I measure including the box style domed sapphire crystal. I measure it at about 14 mil. I mean, that's a couple mil up from there. So really it's closer to like probably 12. Actually, I didn't measure it with uh, just the bezel. Let's do that real quick. So if you try to measure it with just the bezel, yeah, you're closer to like 12 and a half ish or something. You got to kind of guesstimate there, but so some of that's just the uh, crystal up there. It's not a thick watch, really. 20 millimeter lug width. It comes on this really nice Tropic style strap. It also has a very interesting H-Link bracelet. I'll cut film and uh, toss this on in a minute. But they actually used, uh, where'd the package go? Kind of like how G-Shock does their uh, bracelet. They use little mini spring bars in there. So interesting way to build a uh, bracelet. I, I've only seen that on the, uh, I've only had that on the G-Shocks. Comes with this little tool here because it's a little bit smaller pin to get in those holes to get those spring bars out. Solid end links and all that good stuff. Um, you know, it's got the Seiko NH35 movement in it. It has a 120 click bezel, nice and tight. Not amazing sounding, but it feels good. It's tight, there's no play at all, and it lines up perfectly. C3 loom, I'll give you a loom shot towards the end. Really nicely uh, done for the uh, texturing on the both the bezel and the crown. It's super uh, easy to turn and grip. You can see that dial is really nice shimmery anthracite gray dial. Nice polished indices, handset, all that good stuff. The uh, date window frame, I mean, everything is just really well sorted out nice smooth laser engraved i think that's laser engraved case back just really well constructed for 
under $500. So let me pop this on wrist. The Tropic strap is not very long, which is fine, but you can see on my seven and a quarter, wears great. If you have a smaller wrist, this is still totally wearable for smaller wristed guys. So here it is on the bracelet. H-links are always comfortable. I'm a big fan of H-links. And uh, this one, I think, could easily live on a bracelet. It feels really good. I am not a huge fan of the style clasp. Um, I think it, you know, like that Mito I just did recently, I think it can be done, the same style clasp can be done better. This is just where micro brands are at right now. Hopefully they will continue to improve these. There's no reason to have the sharp edges that they do, and there's no reason for them to be as thick as they are. So if micro brands are listening, please continue to improve the clasp. The clasp concept is fine, but make it better. Look to Mito. Mito has it down pat. Um, and you can see the H-link works really good. That first center link on there articulates down, and you're going to have that extreme comfort of it just laying flat on the case back. So um, really nice package overall, guys. I think it would be... Uh, hard to beat this one either new at 450 and you can get that blue dial one which is look looks amazing um, or you can find them used occasionally they pop up um, here it is next to the skx of course this is the mod with the gray dial thankfully i still have this one right now so i can show you a couple of really cool looking gray dialed uh, diver style watches and they're both great options so Anyway, guys, just wanted to let you know that the Arita A12 is worth looking at. It is worth buying, and it's easily under that $500 mark, and it's basically a no-risk proposition. I really think if you want this size and this style of watch, the Arita is kind of a no-brainer. I say go for it. So let me give you a loom shot. It has a really nice application of C3 loom. Even next to a Seiko, it still looks great. I don't think it's C3X1 or anything. It just says C3. But if you put enough C3 on there, it will shine good. It'll look good. So, all right, guys. I'll see you on the next vid.